Hello, my name is Meredith Person. I'm here from the Morris County Medicare Counseling Office to speak to you today uh, about Medicare. We're going to go over the basics of Medicare. Um, currently, we're in the beginning of September 2020. We don't have a lot of information of what's coming up in the open enrollment period, um, and I will talk a little bit about that as we move along. But let's get started talking about Medicare. The first thing I want to explain to you is what SHIP is. Um, SHIP is the State Health Insurance Assistance Program. We are in every state, in every county across the country. Some have different acronyms that they use for them, but we're all the same. We're all, we are trained and certified by Medicare. Some counselors are volunteers, some counselors are paid. In Morris County, we have 30 volunteer counselors. Um, I'm the only paid staff in the county, and we don't work for any insurance company. We can assist you with any Medicare problem, whether it be that you're new to Medicare and are completely confused. Um, we say all the time, if I had a nickel for everybody who said, I'm smart, but I don't understand Medicare, we'd have taken more than one Caribbean cruise by now. So we're here to help you with that, with open enrollment, with bills, with any questions you may have related to Medicare. Um, and as we go on in the presentation, I'll give you my contact information so that you can reach out to the office if you're having problems with Medicare and want to connect with one of our counselors. So general Medicare overview. Medicare is a government-sponsored health insurance program primarily for people ages 65 and over. There are some people under 65 who receive Medicare, but primarily everyone, when they turn 65, becomes eligible for Medicare. People who are under 65 and on Medicare have one of two things. They're either on disability, and after 24 months of receiving Social Security disability, you qualify for Medicare, or they have end-stage renal disease or are diagnosed with ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease. Medicare is administered by the federal government, by CMS, which is the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Um, people a lot of times get confused about Medicare and Medicaid. Medicare is for primarily the elderly. Medicaid is primarily for low-income individuals and family. Um, you can enroll in Medicare either through Social Security or for people who work for the railroad, whether it be New Jersey Transit um, or one of the other major railroad companies, they use what's called the Railroad Retirement Board. It's the same exact benefits, just administered through the Railroad Retirement Board instead of Social Security. Currently, there are approximately 61 million people who, in this country who are enrolled on Medicare. So what is Medicare? Medicare has four parts, A, B, C, and D. Part A is your hospital coverage. Part B is the medical coverage. Those together are known as original Medicare. So part A, what is it? It covers when you go to the hospital, basically your room and board in the hospital. Part B is your doctors, and even when you're in the hospital, the doctors that come and see you, but it covers your doctors and your durable medical equipment. I'll talk more about those. Um, so each of those parts of Medicare has different rules for enrollment, different monthly premiums, deductibles, and coinsurance or copays. This is why Medicare gets so confusing. So to enroll in Medicare, there are a couple of different options. There's the automatic enrollment. You're turning 65, you already get Social Security, and, or you're on disability, hit your 25th month. Great, you are automatically enrolled in Part A and Part B. But if you're still working, you can opt out of Part A and Part B. You can, when you are turning 65, you have what's called your initial enrollment period. It's three, excuse me, three months before you turn 65, the month you turn 65, 
and three months after. That's the period of time you have to enroll in Medicare initially, as well as the additional parts of Medicare. So every, if you don't enroll during that seven month period because you're still working or you have other coverage, you may later have a special enrollment period, which is the three months after you stop working and now you need coverage. If you don't enroll during your initial enrollment period and you don't have a special enrollment period, you have to enroll during what's called the general enrollment period, which is from January to March 30, January 1 to March 31st every year and your coverage doesn't become effective until July 1 of that year. So the goal is to avoid having to fall into that general enrollment period because parts of Medicare also have penalties if you don't enroll when you're first eligible. If, you, if you're still working, you don't need to take Part A and Part B. Most people do choose to take Part A because there's no charge, there's no premium for it. So you're g really getting something for nothing. But if you're still working, you can delay your enrollment in Part B. You must be working for a large employer and have health benefits from them. Or if your spouse is retired or still working and you get coverage from them. Also, if you have retiree coverage of your own, that can take the place of Part B. So if you turn 65, you can elect to just take that Part A. If you automatically get your, your card in the mail, which some people do, you can then reach out to Social Security. You can either call them, you can go online. Um, currently, you can't go to one of their offices, but you can call them or go online, and they can help you through um, opting out of your Part B. I mentioned large employer. Large employer is defined as 20 employers or more once you've reached 65. If you're on Medicare due to disability, large employer is 100 employees or more. So when do you need Part B? When you have health benefits from a small employer, so less than 20 employees, you would need your Part B benefits. If your employer no longer provides you benefits based on active employment, so you've retired or you're on COBRA, that would be when you would want to enroll in Part B. Uh, COBRA is not a substitute for Medicare. Many people think that they're, while they're on COBRA, they shouldn't look into enrolling in Medicare until they reach the end of their COBRA period. And oftentimes, they find that they now have accrued penalties because they no longer have that special enrollment period I talked about. So the special enrollment period for Part B, like I mentioned before, you can enroll in Part B within eight months of the end of your employer health or union health plan coverage. So that means not the beginning of COBRA, that means the end of I'm working for this company and getting their health benefits directly. I'm not paying that higher COBRA rate. Um, so you have eight months to do that from when the coverage ends. You can also enroll in the Part B anytime once you've gotten on Medicare and you're still working. So you may end up, when you go to retire, having some sort of overlap between your Part B and employer coverage, and that's okay. If you, as long as you enroll while you either still have coverage or within eight months, there is no penalty for a late enrollment in Part B. If you wait until that general enrollment period, the January 1st to March 31st, then you are subject to a late enrollment penalty. Okay, we're gonna back up and talk a little bit about Medicare Part A. As I mentioned, Medicare Part A is free for most people. What does Medicare Part A cover? Like I said, hospital stays. So your room and board, your 
hospital room, your hospital meals, um, the nursing staff, all that kind of stuff that you get when you're admitted to the hospital. Part A also covers if you've been in the hospital and now have to go to a rehab or a nursing home before you go home. They don't cover long-term nursing home stays, but they will cover if it's a short-term stay, usually two to three weeks in some cases, if medically necessary, they will cover for longer, but they're not gonna cover you know, years in a nursing home, but that's under your part A. They also cover your home health services. Again, they're not gonna do this for a long-term basis, but if you need assistance when you're coming home from the hospital, when you're coming home from rehab, they will cover in-home therapy or in some in-home nursing. Not a lot, but some. Part A also is where the Medicare coverage for hospice is. Um, on hospice, then Part A does include your doctors, your drugs, um, most of the care that you would receive when under hospice would be covered as Part A. Part A also does cover if you become in need of a blood transfusion. So how do you pay for it and how do you know if you have to pay for it or not? So most people receive Part A for free, but it's based on your work history. You need to have worked 40 quarters or 10 years to receive Part A for free. Some people who may not have worked for the full 40 quarters are able to still get Part A for free on their spouse's work record. That's something that you would talk to Social Security about. If you didn't work 40 quarters and don't have somebody whose work record you can collect under, you would pay either $458 a month if you've worked less than 30 quarters or $252 a month if you've worked between 30 and 39 quarters. Again, most people, they have a 10-year work history or they're collect able to collect under a spouse and they don't pay anything for Part A. Part A, I mentioned that they don't cover long-term in a skilled nursing facility um, that you know they won't cover forever. The same thing is with a hospital stay. They understand that sometimes lengthy hospital stays happen, but they don't cover forever in a hospital either. If you go into the hospital, Part A will cover days one through 60, and you would pay $1,408. We'll talk about this a little bit later, but this is part of why people need a secondary insurance to go with Medicare. It helps pay for these deductibles and co-pays that come with Medicare. Um, once you've been in the hospital for 60 days, you then start paying $352 per day for days 61 through 90. Beyond that, you have what are called lifetime reserve days. So it's another 60 days that you can use throughout your lifetime. Maybe you're in the hospital for 150 days straight and you use all of that up. Maybe you have three different hospital stays and one is 100 days, one is 96 days, one is you know 110 days. You can split those days up and they're still gonna cover. Um, once you've gone beyond the 90 days plus those 60 reserve days, Medicare no longer covers your stay in the hospital. Um, the 60 day, the first 60 days or the benefit period begins each time you're home from the hospital or home from, the nurse, from a skilled nursing facility for 60 consecutive days. So you would need to be home for two months between hospital stays to start with day one again. If you go home for a couple weeks and then go back, you're still counting off of how many days you were already in. 
I know this gets very confusing. Um, and this is one of those things, if you ever have questions, give us a call and we can help explain this. Um, skilled nursing facilities. So you've been in the hospital for at least three days. They now say, you really need to go to a skilled nursing facility or a rehab, build up your strength, get occupational therapy, physical therapy before you go home. So Medicare also pays for this. Again, they will pay for some of it, but not all of it. So your first three days, excuse me, your first 20 days at a skilled nursing facility, you pay nothing as long as you've had that three day hospital stay. Medicare has something that's called a three midnight rule. You must be admitted to the hospital through three midnights in order to qualify for a stay in a skilled nursing facility. Something to be aware of and be careful of. We've been seeing a lot of the am I admitted or am I on observation status. Observation status does not count towards the three midnight rule. So if you're in the hospital, you know, make sure that you have somebody who can advocate for you to make sure if you think you're going to need that follow-up care that you are truly admitted and not just on observation status. Um, something that I'm always a huge advocate of is making sure you have an advocate, making sure you have somebody who can be eyes and ears for you because you're focused on getting better. You're not thinking about what's my insurance going to cover, what is, you know, am I admitted, am I on observation? You want to have somebody who's going to do that for you, whether it be a spouse, a child, a grandchild, a friend. It's always so important to have that second person there um, to be able to support you. So you've been in the hospital for three days. You go to a rehab for up to 20 days with nothing out of pocket. If you need to stay in the facility longer, you can stay up to 100 days and Medicare will pay everything from day 21 through 100. You will have a $176 per day copay. Beyond 100 days at a skilled nursing facility, you're now responsible for all costs. Medicare Part A also pays for home health care. Not full home health care aid round the clock, but the same thing as they'll pay for you to go for physical therapy or occupational therapy to a skilled nursing facility so you can recover. Same thing with home health care. They don't pay for any kind of long-term in-home care. They will pay for any durable medical equipment you need for in-home care. So that would be a walker, wheelchair, um, if you need incontinent supplies, wound supplies, any of those things. That's all covered under your Part B. But for in-home care, they cover no more than eight hours a day, and no more than 28 hours a week of in-home care. It must be medically necessary, so you have to have a doctor putting it as part of your care plan. You must be unable to leave the house to get these services elsewhere, and it must be with a Medicare-approved home health agency. These are all things that if you're in the hospital, a hospital social worker will be able to assist you in making sure that you're connected with a Medicare approved home health agency. So I mentioned that Part B pays for your durable medical equipment and your doctors. Let's talk a little bit more about what else Part B covers. So Part B covers your doctor services. So when you go to the doctor, they cover 80%. You hear a lot about Medicare covers 80% of, of this and that and the other thing. That's correct. Medicare, in most cases, only covers 80%. So when you go to the doctor, if you don't have a supplement, you're going to pay a copay. 
Same as when you're in the hospital. Medicare pays roughly 80%, but you still have a deductible. Part B also pays for any supply, any outpatient um, medical that you need. So if you need lab tests, if you need um, x-rays, MRIs, any of that stuff all falls under Part B. Also, once you've done your inpatient physical therapy or occupational therapy, so that would be at the hospital, your home health aid, or at a rehab facility, when any of that stops and you're now going to a specific location, you know, a physical therapy office, that's now covered under your Part B. Part B also covers mental health services. Um, and as I mentioned, durable medical equipment or DME and outpatient hospital services. Ambulance services. Most ambulance services are not covered under Medicare, the ones that are, are covered under your Part B. Ambulance services are only covered in case of emergency. Transportation ambulance services between two facilities or to go to the doctor, anything like that, are not covered by Medicare. Medicare Part B also covers a number of preventative services. This is a list of the majority of them, um, but basically they cover wellness exams for your annual physical, for, I, I say, from head to toe. They cover from screenings for aneurysms, screening of your bone mass, um, breast cancer screenings, well woman's exam, prostate exam. They cover vaccines, your flu shot, hepatitis. Um, I'm just gonna pause here and let you read the list. So it's a lot of free stuff that Medicare covers and take advantage of these screenings when you go to your doctor. Ask about these screenings. Your doctor should be asking you about these things and these should be part of your annual wellness visit, but keep them in mind and ask your doctor about them if you don't think that you've received it and would qualify for it. So Medicare covers all of these things. What isn't covered by Medicare? Medicare does not have any vision, dental, or hearing coverage. They will cover glasses after you've had cataract surgery. That's it. They don't cover any dental. They don't cover hearing aids. We will talk about some, supplement, some supplements to Medicare that do have some coverage for these things, but Medicare in itself does not. Same thing. Medicare does not cover a long-term stay in a nursing home. Home health aid services, which are considered custodial services. So that's help with bathing, dressing, housekeeping. They don't cover any type of cosmetic surgery. They do not cover acupuncture. They don't cover foot care. There are some exceptions to that, largely in cases where somebody has either a medical condition or you know, somebody who's diabetic that may need to keep up with, with taking care of their feet. But in terms of general foot care, Medicare does not cover it. Like I mentioned, they don't cover non-emergency medical transportation. They do not cover if you need to do any modifications in your home to make it accessible for you to stay there and they don't cover care received outside the United States. There are some exceptions to that. If you're traveling abroad, Medicare is not going to cover you. However, if you are in a part of the United States and have that borders either Canada or Mexico, um, and the you have an emergency and the closest appropriate facility is not in this country, Medicare will cover it. But that's an exception. Other than that, Medicare does not cover any medical care outside of the United States. So we talked about what Part B covers. 
what does Part B cost? So every year, the premium for Part B goes up. These are the costs that are currently being paid in 2020. We don't know yet what it's going to look like in 2021. Part B premiums are partially based on what your income is. So any in, in 2020, any individual making $87,000 or less or any couple making $174,000 or less will pay $144.60 per month for Medicare Part B. If you make more than that amount, you would pay more for your Medicare. Something people run into regularly when they're retiring is their working income, especially for a couple, may have been above the, that amount and they're being charged a higher amount, but now they've retired and their income has gone down significantly. You can go to Social Security. Um, again, you can go online or you can call them and they will review your income. The income for your Part B is based on what your income was two years ago. So for 2020, they would be looking at what your income was in 2018. It's very easy to go to Social Security, show them the documentation that your income has gone down, and they will adjust your Part B accordingly. I always recommend if people are on Social Security, have your Part B taken out of your Social Security. Why? Because every year, Social the Part B will go up. But there's something called a hold harmless clause, which means for people who have their Part B taken out of their Social Security, the Part B premium will never go up more than the cost of living adjustment that you get from Social Security every year. A few years ago, we had a situation where anybody who did not have Social Security um, paying their Part B had approximately a $15 jump in the Part B premium. That wasn't the case for people who were having it deducted from their Social Security. So that's something to keep in mind. What are the other part costs for Part B? Part B also has a deduct an annual deductible, which goes up every year. In 2020, the annual deductible is $198. In 2019, it was $183. We have no idea what it will be in 2021 yet. Medicare Again, the 80-20 rule. Medicare Part B covers 80% of most Part B services. So you have 20% that you have to pay or have a supplemental insurance to pay. There's also something called an excess charge. Some providers, based on the contract that they have with Medicare, can charge an additional 15% above the Medicare approved amount. Talk about that more in a moment. Med so the Medicare approved amount, what does that mean? Medicare, like any other insurance, pays claims based on a fee schedule that Medicare has set up. So any doctor um, or facility that is signing a contract with Medicare knows exactly what they're going to get paid for every service. Part B is going to pay 80% of the amount of the uh, Medicare approved amount for these covered services and the patient has to figure out the other 20%. There are some services that are paid at 100% like flu shot, um, most any vaccine that Medicare covers would be paid at 100%, um, and home health care or hospice services are things that are paid at 100%. So you're looking for a doctor or you're talking to your own doctor as you're getting ready to go on Medicare, and you call them and you say, do you accept Medicare? So you're either going to hear yes or no. Seems simple enough. 
It's not that simple. The easy one is no. They're, they're private, they've opted out of Medicare. You're respon if you decide to go to this doctor, you're responsible for the, for, for the full cost. If they say yes, that means that they either are a participating physician or facility or a non-participating physician or facility. Again, what does that mean? Participating means that they ta take assignment. They pay, they accept the Medicare approved amount, Medicare pays the 80%, you pay the 20%. Non-participating or do not accept assignment means that they can charge you that 15% above the Medicare approved amount. So instead of paying 25% of the bill, you're now paying 35% of the bill. So how does this all work? So claims to original Medicare for part A and B services. Providers, so your doctors or your facilities, submit the claim to Medicare if they are if they accept assignment or don't accept assignment. Claims are processed processed by Medicare and they pay. If the physician accepts assignment, Medicare pays the physician. If Medicare does if the physician or facility does not accept assignment, Medicare gives the amount to the patient. In a lot of cases, if you have a secondary insurance, you don't have to worry about this, that this is all kind of dealt with behind the scenes. So how do I figure out what I'm responsible for, what my physician charges, any of all of this? If you're on commercial insurance, you get an explanation of benefits. Medicare has something similar. It's called a Medicare summary notice. So you'll see on this slide, this is from a doctor who, an eye doctor um, for eye and medical examination for diagnosis and treatment, established patient one or more visit. Is the service approved by Medicare? Yes. Now you see here, the amount the provider charged was $143. The Medicare approved amount is $107.97, Medicare paid $86.38, and it says the maximum you may be billed is $21.59. So that's that 20% that you would be responsible for. You're not responsible for the difference between the 143 and the 107 you're only responsible for 20% of the Medicare approved amount, that 107. You can also, so these Medicare summary notices get mailed to you. You can also go online to medicare.gov and you can create a login where you can see all of these online. Um, it's a wonderful site, I strongly recommend it. Um, I, you know, I have my day job and then my non-day job is as a caregiver for my father. I love using the My Medicare site to be able to keep an eye on his claims, um, to be able to see what medications he's taking, all of these things. Um, he does not live with me, so with doing this from a little bit of a distance, it makes my life easier. Um, and for somebody who is technology savvy, this is a great way to be able to see your claims much faster than waiting for Medicare summary notice, which is normally only mailed quarterly. Um, this slide explains a little bit about it. You can go to mymedicare.gov. That's where you would set up the login. Um, if you go to medicare.gov, you'll see a link to create the My Medicare login. So it is part of the federal Medicare website, and it is, um, as it is designed to be secure and allows you to see 
your claim statuses um, and look up providers and services in real time. For somebody who is, may already be on Medicare, you should have received a new Medicare card. Medicare cards used to have your social security number on it or the social security number of the person whose work record you were using for, social, for Medicare. If you still have a card with your social security number on it, you should have received a new card. If you didn't, please call 1-800-MEDICARE so they can make sure that you get your new card. Um, a card with your social security number on it will no longer be able to be used for uh, claims and benefits that providers and facilities are filing on your behalf. Okay, we talked about Medicare Part A and B, or original Medicare. And I kept talking about that supplemental, something to cover that 20%. There are two different types of it. Oops. There is Medicare Supplement, or Medigap, and Medicare Advantage. We're going to talk first about Medicare Supplement Insurance, or Medigap. So you're going to see, if you haven't already, all sorts of advertising about insurance companies and about insurances that work with Medicare. If you hear the ad, go to any doctor or hospital that accepts Medicare, that is a Medigap plan. That is a surefire way to know that you're talking about a Medigap plan. Medigap plans, or Medicare supplement, follow the same network as original Medicare. So you're not going to be able to go to a doctor who says, no, I don't take Medicare and use your Medicare supplement plan. Won't work that way. If they take Medicare, they take the Medicare supplement. Um, Medicare supplements are provided by private insurance companies. You can get Medigap plans from Aetna, Horizon, Blue Cross, AmeriHealth. Um, there are a number of different companies doesn't matter what that company's physician or facility network is, it's all about the Medicare network. So, like I said, ways to support, to supplement original Medicare. The first one is some people have a retiree plan um, from their employer or union and they use that as a supplement. Medigap policies that I just talked about. You can pay everything out of pocket and not have a supplement. Or there are programs to help pay for your Medicare, including the Medicaid program. Um, though to qualify to have Medicaid with Medicare, you need to have a very low income. So retiree in health coverage. So you find, or, or if you're still working. You want to talk to your employer or your union um, to find out how they can work with Medicare. How do they go to the doctor and Medicare pays and then you have to submit the bill? Second, ask those questions. Um, does your employee, employer or retiree coverage have monthly premiums, deductibles, what's their drug coverage look like? These are all questions you want to ask if you want to stick with an employer or retiree coverage. Um, almost all of these plans will require you to have Part A and Part B once you retire. Medigap, or Medicare Supplement. So, like I said, these are sold by private insurance companies. They cover that 20% of Part A and B, also called Medicare Supplement Insurance. They have standardized policies. They're letters A through N, because let's make things more confusing with the Medicare Parts A through D. Um, so every plan lettered A. Doesn't matter which company I buy it from, the coverage is going to be exactly the same. Any company I buy a plan D from, coverage is going to be exactly the same, and so on and so forth. 
again, it follows the Medicare network. So how does a Medigap work? You have these standard benefits, and I'll show you a chart with that in a minute. You pay your premium based on company and based on age. So while the coverage is the same from company to company, the costs may not be. And different letter plans are going to have different costs. Um, ones that have more coverage are going to have a higher premium. Ones with less coverage are going to have a lower premium. Medigap pays after Medicare pays. So again, if Medicare pays for it, if Medicare covers it, Medigap will pay. If Medicare does not cover it, Medigap is not going to cover it. So when you're in your general enrollment period, or your, I'm sorry, your initial enrollment period or your special enrollment period, you have a guaranteed enrollment into these Medigap plans. But after six months, they can turn you down. They can medically underwrite. You're no longer guaranteed enrollment. Medigaps also do not have any drug coverage. You would need to purchase a separate Part D for your drug coverage. I will get to that. So this is the chart that shows you the Medigap plans for each letter. You'll see even though we do have letters of plans A through N, there are some letters missing. We have had plans that have stopped being sold over the years. Um, for example, you'll see here Plan C and Plan F are off to the side in blue. They are no longer sold um, to anybody who became eligible for Medicare after January 1st, 2020. So right now, somebody who is new to Medicare can choose from plans A, B, D, G, K, L, M, or N. You'll see here that it shows what the Medicare costs are that it covers as Part A, Part B, and other. Um, so these are all showing you the copays and deductibles that it covers. When you look at plans K, L, and M, you'll see that they have some percentages instead of stars. So that means that they don't cover that particular thing at 100%. So for example, hospital deductible. So that $1,408 each benefit period, plan A does not cover that at all. Plans B, D, G, and N cover it at 100%. Plan K covers it at 50%, as does plan M. And plan L covers it at 75%. So that's how you would read this chart. Um, you'll see that there are some benefits, like the hospital copayment, where all plans cover it at 100%. Um, the most comprehensive plans that we have at the moment are plans D and G that cover just about everything. Um, our the other plans cover a variety of the benefits available, which include your skilled nursing facility, copay, hospice care, your Part B deductible, Part B coinsurance, um, that extra 15% that you can get charged at the doctor. Um, these are all things that they may or may not cover based on which letter plan. This is also a chart that is available on the New Jersey SHIP website. Um, the link, I will have the link to that a little bit later. You can also Google NJ SHIP, um, and that's the first thing that comes up. It's a little bit of a longer website, so I always just tell people to Google NJ SHIP. So where do we get more information on Medigaps? The last option on the list is that New Jersey, Web, New Jersey Ship Med 
the CARE website that I mentioned. So it's www.aging.nj.gov. You can also call 1-800-MEDICARE and ask for the publication Choosing a Medigap Policy. You can call the different companies that are selling Medigap policies and get a quote. You can also call the New Jersey SHIP hotline or you can call the Morris County SHIP office. Um, you'll also find if you go onto the New Jersey SHIP website, a list of all of the companies that sell Medigap policies in New Jersey, well, that currently sell Medigap policies in New Jersey, as well as their phone numbers. So we have A, B, Medigap. I mentioned drug coverage, so that's your Part D. Part D is a separate drug plan that would either come from potentially employer coverage or union coverage or a private insurance company. Some people are able do get VA coverage, um, but you would need to get that to go with your original Medicare and your Medigap. So there's a standalone prescription drug Part D. You can also get a Part D coverage as part of a Medicare Advantage plan. I know we haven't talked about Medicare Advantage much yet. Or credible coverage from an employer or union. What does credible coverage mean? It means at least as good or better than the basic Part D plan. VA coverage is not considered credible coverage, but we've, I've seen many veterans over the years who get the majority of their medications from the VA. They may have one or two that they get from a local pharmacy and the co their generics, the co-pays aren't much, and they never get a Part D, and that's okay. Um, the only thing to keep in mind is that there is a penalty if you, do, if you decide to get a Part D plan after not having credible coverage. So in 2020, there are 28 different drug plans to choose from in New Jersey. And every year, it does change. We have some companies come in, we have some companies leave. They're offered under a, company, under a contract with Medicare. And most of the plans are national, that you can get them filled at any pharmacy across the country. Um, so I know that in this area we have people who are snowbirds, who, you know, you go to Florida in the winter and you want to be able to get your medications when you're down there. With a Medigap and a Part D, you're covered for that. Also, if you go on vacation and need medications, you're covered. So, Part D coverage, how does it work? So it's for prescription drugs only. It does not cover over-the-counter medications, covers brand name and generic drugs, must cover at least two drugs in each treatment class, so that would be the formulary. It covers insulin and supplies for injecting insulin. If you're a diabetic, some of your care is covered under Part D, and some of it is covered under your Part B. Um, same thing with vaccines. The medication that is used in the vaccine is covered under your Part B, um, as is the syringe and the needles and all of that. Um, some of the medications used in vaccine are covered, or used in in injections, are covered under your Part D. I know it gets a bit confusing. So drug formularies, what is it? It's a list of drugs that the plan will cover. It might not include the specific medication that you are on, but there would be something similar on the formulary that would treat whatever condition it's being used for. Just like commercial insurance, they have, most plans have different tiers of drugs, which your copays vary based on which tier it is. Um, there are some types of drugs that are not covered. So for example, 
over-the-counter drugs, um, cosmetic drugs, or what they refer to as lifestyle drugs. Um, any medications that would treat something like ED, um, or some if you wanted Botox injections, these kinds of things would not be covered. While a drug may be covered, there may be restrictions. Um, and this is something you want to keep in mind when you're comparing drug plans. There can be quantity limits, which means that in the course of a month or in the course of a year, you can only get a certain number of pills. You may be required to have prior authorization, which means that you have to get approval from the drug, from the insurance company before they will cover the drug. Or they might require step therapy, which means that you have to try other medications, um, whether it be over-the-counter medications or generic medications or other medications on the formulary before they will approve this particular drug. Um, if you have already gone through that and then change your Part D insurance company, you can provide the documentation, your doctor can provide the documentation and you will not have to go through the step therapy again. When you're comparing Part D plans, you also want to look at pharmacies. The, there are preferred pharmacies, there are in-network pharmacies, there are out-of-network pharmacies. They're all going to have different costs. So you want to compare based on different pharmacies. And also, does the insurance company provide mail order? Sometimes mail order is more expensive, but a lot of times it will actually save you money. We'll talk about in a minute how you can compare the different costs. So an overview of Medicare Part D drug plans in 2020. The premiums range from $13 a month to $115 a month, with the average around $40 a month. Some plans have a deductible, some plans don't. So the highest deductible currently is $435. So that would mean that at the beginning of the year, you would have to pay your, either the entire drug cost or a percentage of the drug cost until you get to $435, at which point the insurance would kick in. You hear a lot about Medicare Part D and the donut hole, the coverage gap. So the way this works is you have your deductible period, where you're paying everything out of pocket until you get to the 435 or whatever the deductible is. Then you reach the end of your deductible, you have a copay or coinsurance for all of your medications until your total drug costs reach $4,020. Now that includes what you're paying out of pocket and what the insurance company is paying out of pocket. Then you reach the donut hole. When you get into that donut hole, you pay 25% of the list price of the drug until your out of pocket reaches $6,000. $350. That includes what you've already paid before you get into the donut hole. It's that's your amount for the entire year. Most people who most people don't ever get out of that donut hole. That they reach the donut hole sometimes in the fall. Um, if they're on a lot of generic medication or a few generic medications, they may not reach it at all for the year. Um, once you reach that $6,350 out of pocket, you go into what's called catastrophic coverage. That means that for the rest of the year, you pay no more than $9 per prescription. Realistically, the only people who reach that level are people who are on a lot of expensive medications. The majority of people never get to that point. So comparing plans, what are the things you want to keep in mind? So it's the four C's, coverage, costs, convenience, and coordination. Coverage, are my drugs covered by the plan and are there any restrictions? Costs, what's the monthly premium? 
What are my co-pays? How much am I going to pay for the entire year when I consider my co-pays and my premium? Convenience. Does my pharmacy work with this plan? Is it a preferred pharmacy? Is there a local pharmacy that works better with the plan? Coordination. Will it work with my other health or drug benefits? So where do you find the answers to this? Two things. You can either go on the Medicare website or call a SHIP counselor. Um, so on the Medicare website, every year they have, they always have it up, but it's the fine health and drug plans. You can go to www.medicare.gov slash plan dash compare. Um, or from the Medicare care homepage, you can select find, it's currently find 2020 health and drug plans. Um, by the end of the month, we'll probably see find 2021 health and drug plans. You can enter your drugs and you can compare plans. Um, you see a screenshot here of what you come up to when you click on find 2020 health and drug plans. And this would be where you would either log in if you've already created a login for My Medicare, or you can create one. So you go through, you compare plans, you get mumbo jumbo that makes no sense to you. How do I figure this out? So once you get the list of the drug plans available, you've entered in all of your information, the medications you take, the pharmacies you go to, um, all of that, which is walks you through entering that information step by step. You now have 28 prescription plans available. You want to sort plans by lowest drug and premium cost. So we're showing here, because um, this year the plan with the lowest cost was Humana Walmart Value Plan, which was $13.20 for the, for the month, well, per month. Um, so you see here, it's going to show you what your drug deductible is, which in this, for this plan was $435 for th at the beginning of the year. This person's estimated drug costs at the pharmacy plus their premium cost would be $236.40. So this person is likely on one or two generic medications and never makes it out of the donut hole and doesn't even hit their deductible. Um, and there are definitely people out there who fall into that category. Quick note that I'll come back to, even if you're on no medications or only one or two inexpensive medications, you still want a Part D plan because there is a penalty for not taking a Part D. So what do you do if your, if your medication isn't covered by the plan you choose? Every year there's open enrollment from October 15th to December 7th. You can change your drug plan at any point during that time. Once that's over, you're stuck for the year. After December 7th, whatever was the last plan you picked, that's what you're, you'll have. So during that, once you're, you're stuck for the year, um, you and your doctor can work to figure out if there's something in the formulary that might work for you as a possibility. Um, if for some reason you cannot change medications, your doctor may be able to request an exception, basically appeal it to have it covered. Um, and would definitely recommend revisiting your plan during the next open enrollment period to get a plan that will work with your medications. So your prescription isn't covered by the plan and, okay, Part D late enrollment penalty. So I mentioned that if you don't get your Part D when you are eligible for it, there is a penalty if you don't have credible coverage. 
So it's added to the monthly premium for your Part D for the rest of your life. Um, it is calculated with any plan that you may take and it changes annually. So it's 1% of the average of the Part D premium for every month that you didn't have coverage. So for example, if you delayed enrollment for three years in a Part D, that would give you a 36% penalty or $11.70 per month. And next year that amount would go up because or we would expect it to go up because usually the average of the national Part D premium goes up year over year. Um, unfortunately, I've seen people who weren't on any medication, they're now in their 80s, they need an expensive medication, and their, pre their penalty is twice what their premium would be. Um, so it's really important to make sure you take that Part D. If you do qualify for some of the programs for people with low income that will pay the premium, will pay that penalty, but not everybody qualifies for that. All right, so we talked about original Medicare, Part A and B, Medicare Supplement or Medigap, and Part D prescription coverage. I alluded to this Medicare Advantage plan, which is also called Part C. So what is it? A Medicare Advantage plan is either an HMO or a PPO and can also be called a Medicare health plan. They're very similar to commercial insurance that we see from employers, HMOs, PPOs, which most people are very used to. These insurance companies have a contract with Medicare to provide Medicare benefits to beneficiaries. So where with original Medicare, Medicare itself was your insurer, well now your A, your B, your supplement, and your drugs will all be with the Medicare Advantage plan. So all of your services now would come through your Medicare Advantage plan, including your medications. You cannot have a Medicare Advantage plan and a separate Medicare prescription plan or Part D. You can only have one or the other. With a Medicare Advantage plan, you may have to use a specific network. It will not be the Medicare network. It would be the plan's own network. And you may need referrals, um, especially if you have an HMO. PPOs tend to be some of the more expensive Ad Medicare Advantage plans, but they usually don't need referrals. These are not supplements to Medicare. They are in place of original Medicare. And you would still have a Medicare card, but you would instead have a regular insurance card from the Medicare Advantage plan. So with Medicare Advantage, what are your out-of-pocket costs? You still have to pay your Part B every month. Even though you're not getting Medicare directly from CMS, you still have to pay that Part B premium. Some Medicare Advantage plans have no monthly premium, and some do have a premium. Also, your coinsurance and co-pays will be different than they would be under original Medicare. That's something you want to look into before you sign up for a Medicare Advantage plan. Um, and Medicare Advantage plans do differ from plan to plan. It's not like with Medigaps where I can say, every plan A has these benefits, every plan N has these benefits. Comparing Medicare Advantage plans is a little bit more like apples and oranges. So currently in New Jersey, we have eight companies offering 57 plans. The plans are offered by county. So if you currently live in Morris County and you were to move to Sussex County or Ocean County or any other county or even out of state, you would need to change your plan. With the Medigap plans, once you buy it, as long as you pay the premium every month, it's yours for your entire life. With a Medicare Advantage plan, you have to renew it every year. And if you move out of county, you need to change plans. 
So the premiums for Medicare Advantage plans range from $0 to $198 per month. We have 24 plans that have no monthly premium, and we have four plans that also reduce the member's Part B premium by $32 to $55 a month. Um, if the plan premium is more than $100, it's worth looking at a Medigap plan instead. Um, you may get more bang for your buck. Some plans have a deductible that you need to spend before the plan will pay, but not all of them. Um, Medicare Advantage plans also have copays for everything. Every time you see a doctor, get a test, um, anything, until you reach your maximum out of pocket, which in most cases is $6,700. Medicare Advantage plans. So what are the advantages? These are some of the supplemental or extra benefits offered by Medicare Advantage plans in 2020. Comprehensive dental benefits. Uh, also not on this slide is vision and hearing. There are some vision and hearing benefits with some of the plans. They're not all comprehensive. Uh, you can also receive home delivered meals after a hospital stay, uh, something like Meals on Wheels. You also can receive a spending card to use for over-the-counter items, uh, vitamins, um, something as simple as ibuprofen or Tylenol, as well as adult diapers, a shower chair, things of that nature. They may also cover transportation to medical appointments. Be aware with something like this, it may be that they'll pay for an Uber. It may not be that they would have a wheelchair van or an ambulance. They, some of them also have coverage abroad for medical emergencies. So these are all things that you would want to look into when you're looking at these plans. What are some of the other questions you should ask before joining a Medicare Advantage plan? Are my doctors and hospitals in the network? Like I mentioned, these follow the private insurance company's network. And just because maybe you had Aetna as when you were working doesn't mean that the Aetna Medicare network is going to be the same network. And it may not be the same network, or in fact, it won't be the same network as if you had original Medicare. So make sure you do your homework on that. Um, I usually say the, when you're looking at Medicare Advantage plans, Make a list of what doctors you currently have that you're not willing to part with. Call them and ask them which Medicare Advantage plans they participate with. That's usually the best way to narrow down your choice of plans. When you're looking at the summary of benefits, you want to look at what are the co-pays or co-insurance for every service. What's your co-pay when you go to the doctor, when you go to a specialist? When you go to the hospital, how much are you going to pay if you have to go to physical therapy for each visit? And how much are you going to pay for any type of tests that are required? Is there any out-of-network coverage? Some of these plans have no out-of-network coverage. Um, some of these plans will not cover you if you travel out of state. Do you need to have a referral to go for any treatment, to go to any doctor that's not your primary doctor. Make sure that it covers medications and covers your medications. How does it work in combined with any other coverage you might have, whether it be employer or retiree? And like I mentioned before, you want to look at the details on vision and dental benefits. Also, keep in mind that if you take a Medicare Advantage plan and you want to go back to a Medigap or Medicare supplement, you may be subject to medical underwriting. Medicare Advantage and Medigap are two separate things. So Medicare Advantage rules to keep in mind. Doctors and hospitals can leave the plan network at any time during the year but you cannot leave the plan until the following year. 
Medicare will not pay for any services that are not covered by Medicare Advantage Plan. Medicare Advantage Plans do have to offer the same benefits as Part A and Part B, but if there's, they don't have to cover it at the same rate that Medicare does. Like I mentioned, if you have drug coverage, you must get it from the Medicare Advantage plan. You cannot have a separate Part D. If the plan denies you a service, you do have the right to appeal it. And co-pays for services cannot be increased during the year. As I mentioned before, if you move out of a county, you will have to change plans. And if you move out of New Jersey, you will definitely have to change plans. If you have a complaint about your plan, call 1-800-MEDICARE. So original Medicare and Medigap or Medicare Advantage plan, how do you know what to pick? You want to stay with original Medicare if you have health coverage from an employer or a union and you want to keep it. You have a Medigap policy and want to keep it. You are a snowbird and travel outside of New Jersey for long periods of time. You cannot enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan and use a Medigap policy or employer benefits. Usually the two Medicare Advantage and Medigap are mutually exclusive and usually so are Medicare Advantage and retiree coverage. So here are some examples of the costs and some things to keep in mind in the long run. So example number one, these are Mrs. Healthy's costs with Medigap versus a Medicare Advantage plan. So her Medicare Advantage plan has no monthly premium, and if she were to get a plan, a Medigap Plan G, she'd be paying $1,800 a year in premium. No Part, D, Part B deductible with her Medicare Advantage plan. For Medigap, it's $198. Every time she goes to her doctor, she has to pay $20, and she only goes twice a year, so it's only $40. And she goes to the specialist twice, and that costs her $100. If she has a plan G, that pays for all of it. She needed to have some minor outpatient surgery that cost her $125 with the Medicare Advantage plan. She's also a diabetic, and her supplies cost her $240 for the year. She needs some routine dental work, which her Medicare Advantage plan covered and would have been $300 with a Plan G. Uh, her glasses were only $100 with her Medicare Advantage plan or would have been $500 with a Plan G. Her blood work for her uh, outpatient surgery cost her $13 with her Medicare Advantage plan. So for the year, her out-of-pocket costs were $618 with a Medicare Advantage plan or $2,798 with a Plan G. That's a big difference, and especially when you add in the Part B premium for the year, it becomes $2,353 versus $4,335. She's healthy, so a Medicare Advantage plan might be the right way for her to go. Example number two, Mr. Sick. His costs with a Medigap versus a Medicare Advantage plan. So he has the same plan, he's looking at the same Medicare Advantage plan that Mrs. Healthy was. So the plan premium doesn't have a premium with Medigap. He pays $2,040 for the year for a Plan G, plus his Part B premium. He goes to the doctor six times over the course of the year, his primary doctor. So for Medicare Advantage, that becomes $120. For the specialist that he goes to 12 times a year, he pays $600 with a Medicare Advantage plan. He needs an MRI for $125. His monthly durable medical equipment costs are $240. He has two five-day hospital stays, which cost, with his Medicare Advantage plan cost him $2,950. And he needs rehab after that, 
which costs him another $1,760. He needs blood work four times a year that costs him $52. He had, before one of those hospital stays, he had an ambulance trip to the hospital and an ER visit, which cost him $250 and $90. Outpatient surgery for $400, physical therapy for $550, Eyeglasses were $100, where they were $500 with a Plan G. His routine dental was covered, where with Plan G it would have been $300. And he did hit his max out of pocket um, and only paid $6,700 for the year instead of $7,232. Um, but when you add in your Part B premium, his Medicare and Medicare Advantage plan cost him $8,435 for the year, where with a plan G, it only cost $4,773. So if you have a lot of medical expenses, a plan G can, or any Medigap plan can be more advantageous. You want to keep in mind, do I want to spend this money up front at the beginning of the month, or do I want to spend it in co-pays throughout the month? Um, that with a Medigap plan, likely you're not going to have any copay when you go to the doctor, versus with a Medicare Advantage plan where you will. So Part D and Medicare Advantage plans both have enrollment periods. And they have the same ones. This is partially because the two types of plans you can't have together, so they have the same rules. They both have initial enrollment period. So that's the same as we talked about with the Part A and Part B. Three months before you become eligible for Medicare, the month you're eligible, and the three months after. There is open enrollment every year, the annual election period, October 15th to December 7th. So we're quickly coming up on ours. Um, right now it's the beginning of September, so we're a little more than six weeks away from the start of open enrollment for 2020. And this is a good chance for you to review your coverage. For Medicare Advantage plans, you can have an additional enrollment period that you can switch between January 1 and March 31st every year. You can leave a Medicare Advantage plan and return to original Medicare with a Part D. There are also special enrollment periods just like with Medicare Part A and B. If you moved out of, if you had a Medicare Advantage plan and move out of the service area of your plan, if you lose your credible coverage, or if you move into or leave a nursing home. These all give you the ability to change your plan even if it's in the middle of the year. Medicare Advantage also has a no-risk trial situation. You can drop a Medicare supplement policy and enroll into a Medicare Advantage plan for the first time, or when you are new to Medicare at age 65, you can enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan and you can still return to original Medicare without any penalty and still get a guaranteed issue situation if you do it within the first 12 months. So if you start off on Medicare with a Medicare Advantage plan and three years down the road, you want to switch to original Medicare, you're outside of that trial right situation. Um, if you do it within your first 12 months on Medicare, you do have a guaranteed issue period to go back to original Medicare. Annual enrollment, like I just mentioned, October 15th to December 7th. You can join or switch a Medicare Advantage plan or a Part D. You want to compare your plans right during this time, whether it be going online and comparing them, making an appointment with a SHIP counselor, um, see what best fits your needs. And you can do this every year, and I recommend doing it every year. I have seen people who have saved thousands of dollars just by switching. Um, your coverage will begin January 1st, and 
it does not have anything to do with a Medigap or Medicare supplement. This October 15th to December 7th is only Medicare Advantage plans and Part D. Medicare supplement or Medigap, you can apply for it any time during the year. Okay. I mentioned earlier that there are things to help pay for your Medicare expenses. So the first one is for the lowest income, which is Medicaid. So if you are on Medicare and your income is less than $1,064 for a single or $1,437 for a couple, and you have assets of less than $6,000, which does not include your car or your house, you're eligible for Medicaid. Medicaid then acts, once you apply and get on Medicaid, will act as a supplement to Medicare. Um, it will pay your premiums, your deductibles, your co-insurance, it, it pays everything. Um, the only cost that you would then have would be for your prescriptions, which would be $1.30 for generic or $3.90 per brand, for a brand, unless your copay with your Part D was already lower than that. Medicare pays first, Medicaid pays second. You can apply for this at the County Board of Social Services. So you would either go all up to the Office of Social Services on East Hanover Avenue, or you could apply through Zoo Fall Health. If you make a little more money than that, you may qualify for SLIMB, which is Specified Low Income Medicare Beneficiary. If your income is $1,436 for a single or $1,940 married, uh, you may qualify for SLIMB. That pays your Part B premium. And that would mean that you would get that back in your Social Security check. Um, that's something that you would need to contact the state for. You can get more information either by calling 800-792-9745 or going online to aging.nj.gov. The next level above that is for people who have a yearly income of no more than $28,399 or a couple with an income below $34,817. It's called PAD or P-A-A-D. It's New Jersey's Pharmaceutical Assistance to the Aged and Disabled. If you qualify for this, um, and there's no asset limit on this, your Generic drugs would be no more than $5, and your brand name drugs would be no more than $7. It would all, this also pays any Part D penalty that you may have. Um, the SLIMBY that, that pays your Part B also would cover any Part B penalty you might have. Uh, this is something you can apply for either through the state or we have applications in our county ship office and we can assist you with those. Slightly higher is the Senior Gold Discount Program, um, which has also helps you at the pharmacy. It does not pay your Part D premium, uh, but it does pay $15 plus 50% of the remaining cost of each drug. So like I mentioned, you want to every year review your Part D, review if your income has changed, review what you might be eligible for. Um, and things do change every year. If you have a plan that you're not happy with, file a complaint with the plan and with Medicare. Um, we have seen plans that have been told they can't sell their plan anymore because there have been too many complaints. It does happen. Um, take advantage of Medicare open enrollment to review all of these things. And beware of scams, especially as we head into open enrollment. 
Medicare will never call you and ask for bank information or social security number. Treat your Medicare number like your credit card. Do not give it out willy-nilly. Give it to your doctor. Give it if you're going for medical care. Those are the only places that need it. Do not give it out over the phone. Medicare also will not send representatives to your home. These are insurance agencies trying to sell you health care policies. One note about the health insurance marketplace. Health insurance, market, health insurance marketplace does not work with Medicare. Anybody who is eligible for Medicare cannot get a marketplace plan. Like I mentioned at the beginning, SHIP uh, is here to help you with anything for Medicare. We are locally funded. We don't work for any insurance company. Um, and our counselors can assist with simplest things as a Medicare overview and choosing a plan or more complicated things like bills and appeals. You can reach out to the New Jersey SHIP hotline, you can reach out to the Morris County SHIP office, or you can go on the New Jersey SHIP website to get all of the information that I've covered in this. Um, as you see, it's a bit of a long website, Google NJ SHIP, and it's the first thing that'll come up. Right now, due to the pandemic, we are not doing any in-person appointments. Um, our office is still working largely remotely. So likely if you call the county office, you will be asked to leave a message and someone will get back to you. And even if you call the state, you will likely get their answering service and not a counselor on the line. Um, but we are getting back to people. We are still actively counseling. Um, also, if you call and leave a message with the Morris County office, because we are largely a volunteer, volunteer um, organization, you may receive a return call from a block number. The counselor will leave you a, a message letting you know when they are going to a day and time when they will be calling back. Um, this is because they're calling from home and we do encourage them not to give out their personal phone numbers until they've been working with somebody. Um, we do not expect that in-person appointments will be resuming until sometime in 2021. So all of open enrollment will be done remotely. So I will leave you with my contact information, um, the phone number for the county SHIP office, as well as my email address. Please feel free to reach out with any questions or concerns you have. And uh, we're going to hope to do an updated video once we have information for this year's open enrollment.